Ever since I could remember, I've been in trouble. Skipping school in the first grade, the fighting in the third grade, getting kicked out of school in the sixth grade, expelled from school in the eighth grade. 13 years old, I ended up doing some serious charges and I couldn't get stale trouble for nothing. Somehow I gained the insight on the dope trade and I sold the napalm cocaine to an undercover police officer in 1992 and I got 10 years for that. And I stabbed somebody and got 10 more because of the incarceration on different times in different places. I became accustomed to this lifestyle and, and I liked it. 20 years in the penitentiary, I, I spent probably half of it in solitary confinement because I was a dangerous staff and, ins, and inmates. Different gangs in prison, they see somebody that they can fight or can handle themselves and, and has heart, don't, don't really, um, don't back down. They want you in their gang. I mean, they want you to be a part of theirs. It makes them stronger. And then I adopted their ideology, the white supremacists and things like that. And I thought this was, this was it. This is my family. This is the family that, I, that I'd never had. I made rank. I mean, I just wasn't, wasn't a soldier. I made rank with Aaron Circle. You got people that come into prison and they say, hey, um, they don't want to fight because they're riding with the Lord. That whole Christian thing was a weakness to me. I seen it as somebody that it was trying to get out of fighting or get out of the attention towards his manhood or whatever it's going to do in there. It was just a, a weakness to me. My faith is in me, wasn't in anybody else. I mean, I, I always thought I was the one in control. I made things happen. I got a dictionary and I started reading words out of the dictionary, practicing my senses, because when I got out, I wasn't planning on going back in. I wanted to um, appear to everybody as somebody that was free. And so when I did get out, I had plans to have the things I never had before. And I never had an education either, so I got my GED right before I got out. I ain't been in school since I was 13. And so I started working, making things happen, but I wasn't gonna make it happen going back to prison. I remodeled the house out there in Galveston uh, for Prince Properties, and uh, he asked me to come back and remodel his house here in Midland, uh, which is right behind Wendy and Kirk Farquhar. I'm working upstairs, and her and uh, Wendy and Kirk and they're walking their dog and say, hey, what's the story with you? Why, I mean, what, why are you always here? I said, ma'am, I live here. I'm remodeling the guy's house over Midland Country Club Estates, and I live here. She said, wow, you, what, you do that type of work? Hey, come on to my house, and maybe uh, you could do some work for me. We started talking a little bit, and, and uh, she said, I got a friend of mine that needs some help. Her name is Janice. Now, Janice got a little intense. She started asking me questions about the Bible and, do you know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior? Are you ready to ask Him to come in your heart? Well, these questions right here, I, I'm not ready for that. It made me want to leave, get out. I mean, it made me uncomfortable. And so uh, she backed up for about two or three seconds. <laughs> That's Janice. Janice, the way she, she treats you, the way she makes you feel, she has a, a, a love and a, a, and a heart that that surpasses everything I've ever known. She was like the mother I never had. I mean, she was like the family that I never had, her and Bobby and Wendy and Kirk. You get so used to not having anything or anybody and to have somebody unconditionally be there for you for any reason. And this, this made me start caring more. I've never really loved anything but myself. Before Christmas last year, she asked me again, I said, Janice, I'm ready. Wendy and Kirk and um, Bobby and Janice were at her house, and, and they said, go ahead, it's your turn. You, you asked, said, we're not saying nothing. You say how, in your own words how, how you wanted it to happen. I asked Jesus if he would come to my heart and, and, and be a part of my heart and make myself, make me a new person what Janice is, what Wendy is, Kirk and Bobby, I mean, I, I, wanted, I wanted what they had. I mean, I've seen the way they acted, the way they lived, how they treated me, how they treated other people, and I wanted what they had. And I, I cried like a baby. I mean, I mean it, was, it was the first time I cried in ever, my whole life. I, 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 don't, I don't cry for nothing. Even after that, 
every every little situation I get emotional. I said, Mom, why, when is this gonna stop? I, I'm not, I, I can't handle this. I mean, I can't be on the job site and crying and you know, they'll run me off. And Mom said, this, this, this part of the change in your heart, Jason. I mean, this is, this is what God's doing for you. From one extreme to the other, where where the world looked, was a cold place and it was, it was a place where I forced my way into versus a joy that I have that I never knew before. I mean, I never knew love like God gave it to me. And it didn't happen until I was sincere and my heart was was open to, to accept him. I I want to tell everybody. I mean, I want everybody to know it. God's always there. He's he's waiting for you.